Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN, one-click protection for all your devices. Securing yourself couldn't be easier. Visit expressvpn.com slash inside. Welcome to Inside Gaming. I'm Brian. It's weekend roundup time. Guys, there has been a major war going on right now at one of the biggest gaming news sites. Boy, there is some drama. If you haven't been following the news, talking about IGN, whose staff is basically openly feuding with management right now. And we're going to get into some hot button current events here with this one. So... Strap yourself in. So it all started last Friday when IGN published an article titled How to Help Palestinian Civilians. And the page listed five organizations where people could donate. They listed some resources where you could kind of learn more about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. They also added a Palestinian flag on the IGN site. Then two days later, the article completely vanished from the IGN site, much to the surprise of the staff. Then on Monday, 66 staffers on IGN released a letter black Blasting management. They addressed it to the corporate leadership and management at Ziff Davis and J2 Global. That's the site's parent company and owner. Basically, they accused management of messing with their editorial autonomy, writing, We've come to understand that this was a clear instance of corporate overreach and demonstrated blatant disregard for the most basic standards of journalistic integrity and editorial independence. And what editorial independence mean? is that management doesn't get involved in sort of the uh, writing of a, a journalistic outlet, in this case, the site. So they demanded that the article be reinstated and that there be transparency behind the decision to remove the page. The staffers also called for an all-hands meeting internally with the people who took down the article. One IGN employee told the Washington Post that this was corporate censorship. And then the staff statement said that the takedown happened in the early morning hours on a weekend with no notice to the people who wrote it. They added, IGN's editorial team has guidelines about updating content deemed needful of changes, something that we've done multiple times in the past, but wholesale removal of pieces without posting an explanatory statement is expressly against our usual policy. So then, on Monday, the plot thickened. IGN's Twitter account tweeted a statement, basically apologizing, saying that by highlighting only one population, the post mistakenly left the impression that we are politically aligned with one side. That was not our intention, and we sincerely regret the error. So it definitely sounded like something that management wrote that the staffers didn't. Meanwhile, IGN Israel, which is basically a regionally licensed sub-brand, published a statement saying they were willing to support a charity that didn't appear to take a side in the ongoing conflict, but added that the prominent image of the Palestinian flag in IGN US's header during a time of active conflict between two states, which severely affects the innocent civilians of both populations, strongly gave this appearance in our view. So there you go. You've got uh, friction. They're supposed to meet by the end of the week. If that happens, I'll update this. As the Washington Post noted, IGN has done this before, supporting movements like Black Lives Matter and Stop AAPI Hate. Uh, but this has happened at other places too. Game Informer staff published a story with donation links along with resources with more information about the conflict. That was taken down by management. GameSpot did a similar post. That was still up, at least the last time I checked. And GameSpot's managing editor, Tamar Hussein, published a video on YouTube YouTube called a message to the video game industry that decried the conditions of Palestinians and challenged everyone in the games industry to educate themselves about the conflict. So yeah, obviously a hot button issue right now. And in a lot of sites, it has caused big drama between the staff and the bosses. So we will see how this shakes out. All right, we'll get to the rest of the stories in just a second. But first, guys, let's talk a little bit more about, you guessed it, ExpressVPN. Guys, once upon a time in the 20th century, private citizens were at exactly that private. So what's changed aside from, you know, K-pop being super popular? Well, the internet. Because having your private life exposed used to be something only celebrities had to worry about. But in an era where everybody's online, we're all public figures. So to keep my data private when I go online, I turn to ExpressVPN. There's hundreds of data brokers out there, guys. They can sell your information to whoever without even telling you. One of those data points is your IP address. That lets advertisers pinpoint your location, identify you. But because I use ExpressVPN, my connection gets rerouted through an encrypted server that masks my IP address. That makes it harder for third parties to identify me, harvest my data. So if like me, you believe that your data is your business, secure yourself with the number one rated VPN on the market. Visit expressvpn.com slash roundup and get three extra months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash roundup. 
Go to expressvpn.com slash roundup to learn more. All right, on to other stories. Could Warner Brothers games get broken up as part of an upcoming merger? Sure what it sounds like. IGN reporter Julia Alexander commented on the recent news that AT&T is kind of selling off Warner Media, which owns Warner Brothers Interactive and Warner Brothers Games, along with other properties like they own HBO. Uh, they own us too. Warner, <laughs> Warner Media is set to merge with Discovery to make a new big media behemoth uh, and in a tweet, Alexander wrote that the sale includes some of Warner Brothers Interactive slash Warner Brothers games, but not all. Hmm. So, hmm. Leaves a lot of questions, obviously. The WB Games website lists that it has 11 offices worldwide. They have a bunch of studios under it. NetherRealm Studios, big one. They make Mortal Kombat, Monolith Productions, TT Games, Rocksteady Studios, Avalanche Software. So, some heavy hitters there. WB Games, also, they got a headquarters in LA. They got other offices, WB Games Montreal, WB Games San Francisco, and others. So it's a pretty big game conglomerate, but who knows if that's going to get, you know, mostly sold, it's going to split in half, who knows. Four class action lawsuits over Cyberpunk 2077 have been combined into one mega lawsuit. So the lawsuits, you probably heard about these, they're aimed at CD Projekt Red, and of course they have to do with the condition that the game was in when it launched last year. Video Games Chronicle reports that some of CD Projekt Red's own shareholders are involved in some of the suits. They allege that CD Projekt Red violated federal laws by misleading investors over the quality of Cyberpunk on consoles, which caused them to incur damages, at least according to the suit. One of the suits alleges that the developer made false and or misleading statements and or failed to disclose that Cyberpunk 2077 was, quote, virtually unplayable on the current generation Xbox or PlayStation systems due to an enormous number of bugs. CD Projekt Red has said in a previous statement that it would undertake vigorous action to defend itself against any such claims. So there you go. Warzone has banned a lot of players, 500,000 in fact, that is a lot. That came from developer Raven Software, who tweeted this week, banned over 30,000 malicious accounts across Call of Duty yesterday, bringing us to over half a million accounts banned in Warzone. Yikes. Of course, I mean, there's cheaters, there's nothing new. Raven, though, has been pretty proactive about combating them. They even created a dedicated enforcement team to catch cheaters. Back in April, they also outlined their policy on cheating, writing in a blog post. Some have asked if we issue hardware bans. We do issue hardware bans against repeat or serial cheaters. This is an important part of our effort to combat repeat offenders. All right, it's been a long wait, but we are finally getting a new Time Splitters game. Yes, IGN reports that a number of key original members of Free Radical Design, that's the studio that created the franchise, are going to be involved in this new studio. That's gonna include founder Steve Ellis and David Doak. It will be a subsidiary of publisher Deep Silver. In a quote, Ellis said, to finally be able to confirm that the studio has been formed and that we have a plan for the next Time Splitters game is incredible. While we cannot tell you anything more at the moment, we look forward to sharing information in the future. Now, development hasn't started yet. It's probably not going to start for a few more months. Uh, they're still building out the studio, it sounds like, in Nottingham, England. So uh, we, we got a ways to go. Of course, the first time Splitters came out in 2000. Yikes! For the PS2, it was a sequel two years later, and the most recent entry was Time Splitters Future Perfect. That was in 2005. So yes, it has been a long long wait. Now, if you've been on Twitch lately, you probably noticed a trend of some streamers in hot tubs uh, wearing some bathing suits. It's not new, but it has been getting more and more popular. Now, Twitch, they haven't banned the practice, but they are going after some hot tub streamers' revenue, it looks like. Kotaku reports that Caitlin Amaranth Saragusa recently discovered that she now can't make money off ads on her channel anymore. She tweeted this week that Twitch has indefinitely suspended advertising on her channel. She called it an alarming precedent adding that this leaves open-ended the question of where the line is drawn, and she's echoing concerns from a lot of streamers that Twitch's terms of service aren't always the clearest on what streamers can wear and what they can't wear. This has been an issue on Twitch since the very beginning. She told Kotaku that previously she had been making more than a thousand bucks a day on ads before this crackdown. I feel so bad for it. Uh, Twitch did not respond to requests for comments. All right, time for a five-second review. See, this is what I wish space was really like. Like this action, this alien romance. It's regular space, just kind of, kind of boring. I like space. I mean, it was cool when they did the helicopter on Mars. That was cool. But 
That's about it. All right, let's talk about the games coming out next week. First up, an airport for aliens currently run by dogs. Boy, that is a mouthful. This is an open world comedy adventure game. Talk to stock photo dogs, solve their problems, catch a flight, and call it dog airport game when you get tired of saying the full title like I did just now. It comes to the PC and the Xbox Series X, May 25th. Biomutant, ah, oh, here we go, is an open world post-apocalyptic kung fu fable RPG with a unique martial arts style combat system, allowing you to mix melee shooting and mutant ability action it comes to pc ps4 and xbox one may 25th king of seas is an action role-playing game set in a procedural pirate world an epic adventure awaits you in a fantastic world dotted with fights lost islands and treasures a universe that will keep you anchored get it as you struggle to become the king of all pirates it comes to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, May 25th. Experience the ultimate power fantasy as the apex predator of the seas. Andy Orton? No, a terrifying shark. Maneater is a single-player action RPG set in the unforgiving waters of the Gulf Coast. Fight to survive in the open ocean with danger lurking at every depth. Your only tools are your wits, your jaws, and an uncanny ability to evolve. As you feed, it comes to the Switch, May 25th. Ambition, a minuet in power. 18th century Paris, a city of love, lies, and revolution. You are a woman of fashion, trying to survive the political turmoil, date a cast of unforgettable characters, amass the wealth and respect you deserve, engage in gossip that can alter the course of history, or lead you to the guillotine. It comes to PC, May 26th. Welcome to Oddworld! Oddworld Collection is the oddest collection of them all, and the complete Oddworld experience. Escape from your company that wants to turn you into their next delicious piece of meat in the puzzle platformer Oddworld New and Tasty. Avoid extinction and soulless scientists alongside the strangest duo ever in an adventure like no other in Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. Become a bounty hunter with Mercy in Oddworld Stranger's Wrath, which is an unprecedented mix of third-person and first-person shooter. It comes to the Switch May 27th. Pathway! In 1936, Nazi influence has spread along with rumors of secret excavations, mysterious artifacts, and gruesome occult rituals. Assemble a bold team of adventurers, journey through the desert wilderness, outwit foes in strategic squad combat, and locate ancient treasures before they fall into the wrong hands. It comes to the Switch May 27th. Seven years from now, a slice of life story-driven adventure game with a distinct 3D pixel art. Embark on a journey and accompany Haruto Soraki, a high schooler in his quest, to find the memory he presumably lost in an accident seven years ago. It comes to PC and Switch May 28th. Song of Horror Complete Edition. A third-person fixed camera survival horror adventure. Fear the presence, a mysterious entity that you cannot fight. Stay alert, hide, breathe slowly, explore cursed places where unseen spirits and lost souls linger in a true horror story for the ages. It comes to the PS4 and Xbox One May 28th. World's End Club, this charming and vivid story of friendship and mystery, will captivate new and experienced players alike. The Go-Getters Club, a group of misfit students from all over Japan, find themselves trapped in a strange theme park during a class trip. In order to unravel the mystery of their circumstances and find an escape, they must take part in a game of fate that will test their bonds of friendship. It comes to the Switch May 28th. That's all the news I got for you this week, guys. I hope you're having a great weekend. See you soon.